Hello, good afternoon. Um, it's always nice. Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, I'm standing between you and drinks, uh, and I'm very aware of that, so I cut my presentation in half, and then I times it by two. Right, so the subject for today was rapid sector growth, emergence of new markets, opportunities involved in your business, and I think uh, I think you've heard a broad sweep from how to get uh, investment capital into your business, how to use new technologies, how industry players are addressing the different aspects. Uh, there was a lot of talk about fiber, how the fiber and, uh, and wireless can be uh, mutually beneficial. But at the end of the day, you've still got to run your business that you've got today, right? And you've got to plan for the future. So you've got to be aware of all of these things and keep in your mind, how do I satisfy my customer today, and how do I satisfy the customer of the future? So, interestingly enough, we had a WISP phone us out of Cape Town, uh, and they invited us and said, we are, are really struggling, we don't know why, uh, won't you come in and give us uh, uh, one of your point to multi point radios, so we can stick it in and see what happens. On the way through, and the picture's not really great, but we counted 220 radios, and 70% of them were Point to point. Uh, Theresa, you didn't sell them, did you? No, it wasn't you. Uh, and, and so they put us in the worst place possible and said, uh, won't you please connect the customers? Uh, we did connect. Uh, we had three customers on the trial. Um, and then Rob got a call saying the one link was a little bit funny. Uh, it was still delivering 25 megs, but there were some uh, uh, drop packets. So Rob said, OK, I'll get on the plane. We'll go down. When he got down, he took some photographs. He didn't realize that they'd built a new tower in the way. Just went up. But it got us thinking. So consider that very scenario of Bottle Array. 380 megahertz is available, two WISPs in this country, and five gig for point to multi point. Uh, if you think that there were 220 point to point links that we counted and we got bored and then we stopped counting, that um, if 70% of those were unlicensed, that's 154 links. If you multiply that, say let each one had 10 megahertz or 20 megahertz channels, you can quite quickly see how much spectrum you're using. Now, my math isn't great. You ask anyone I owe money to. That, um, that if you're trying to offer a service and you're trying to provide a reliable link, you've got a lot of interference. You've got a lot of noise to, to overcome. So what we're saying, and probably everyone in the, who's in the vendor space will agree with this, is pull out your point-to-point -point links for access, because you're killing yourselves. This is quite simple. You've got to look at point-to-multipoint. It's the logical conclusion. Because the reason why, and we heard it today, why people are going to fiber is because they cannot deliver a reliable service on unsynchronized, cheap, typically cheap, equipment. You've got to start to mature. There is a business that is evolving, but if you don't evolve with it, you're going to be stuck in a situation where you're chapsing all the spectrum to deliver a 5 meg service to a customer. So we've got a solution for you, if you like. Four jets, 160 megahertz, because we do a spectrum reuse of two, or frequency reuse of two. We 256 customers, 300 megs, uh, three gigabits per second, excuse me, on top of the tower, and uh, we'll deliver 11 megs aggregate uncontended service to each of those customers. No problems. For those three customers, we deliver 25 megs, no problem. I've got a link at home, 14.6 kilometers from the base station in Santon, and I get 10 megs up, 10 megs down, because that's a service I bought, but we check the radio, and I can get 50 megs up and 50 megs down because I've got a 50 meg subscriber unit. LTE's go-to-market is, if we, and this is what Vodacom says, if we can get it into the suburb, if we can get it into the gated estate, then we'll put LTE there. And they have the resources, they have the, the, the ability then to go and deliver large capacity. This is coming. One gigabits per second, LTE is coming. But to deliver a service at 14, 15, 20 kilometers and deliver high capacity, there's still a market for this. So, how do you evolve your business? I, um, I think we all know the, the challenges for WISPs. They want to grow their businesses, typically semi-urban or rural environments, typically addressing the home user. 
but the home user ARPU is low. So there you need low cost in equipment. But what happens is you need to build your base stations closer and closer and closer to the customer, right? Which raises your OPEX. If you're building more and more and buying more and more real estate to, to put up towers, there's a cost associated. I mean, I, I enjoyed the comment from one of the WISPs who said, you know, now we've got eight Bucky brigades because all they're doing all day long is changing spectrum. So started with entry-level Wi-Fi products, but need now more and more services. They need to compete. They need to add more product in terms of now that video on demand is here, now that Netflix is here, now that VoIP is here, well, you have to have a network that delivers this. Uh, and of course, I've spoken about building close to the customer, talk about being able to synchronize, talk about coming under pressure for both CapEx and OpEx. So the initial thing is, why don't we go to the enterprise? Why don't we now go and say, let's go and speak to business type customers, SME type customers, and say, you've got a bigger pocket. My ARPU can improve, right? So this is, this is the natural evolution. So talking about fiber, and we, Clint and I sat and we heard earlier on someone mentioned 3,000 rand a meter uh, for building fiber. Well, I can tell you they didn't negotiate well. Because three years ago, Vodacom was paying 350 rand a meter for trenching. And I'm not talking about micro trenching, I'm talking about trenching. I know of another operator that's getting 250 rand a meter today per, for fiber. So let's take, for example, fiber to the home and talk about that this is from the operators. That in some cases, they'll look and say, we'll run fiber past the home and we'll have 25% uptake. We, we're, this is our business model in terms of just a normal suburb. But in a gated community, we need 50% uptake. This is their model. They're all working on return on investment. I'm not going to mention Vox, but some operators are saying 80% of a suburb before they will trench, because it costs a lot of money for the fiber. So if you're talking about then a business model, and I was going to ask if, if my numbers are right. So we, we try to figure this one out. It's, it changes up and down. I think Vumatel was about 800 rand a meter when they built Parkhurst. But let's take a suburb of 5Ks, 150 houses, at 250 rand per meter for distribution, that's 1.25 million rand. 50% last mile at 20 meters, so crossing, not crossing the road, it's just from the curb into the, into the garage. Or you need to, underneath the tar and go to the house 40 meters. Well, we worked out that at 25% uptake, it's 1.25 million rand, uh, plus 230,000 rand, so it's 1.5 million rand for 38 homes. And at 800 rand, a customer, it's 4.8 years for your return on investment. While we were sitting here, I did a quick calculation. Telcom has spent 1 billion rand for fiber to the home so far. They've got 8,200 customers. Right now, their ROI per customer is sitting at 480 years. So there's a business case for rapid deployment. Exactly. So the CEO is gone. <laughs> and if he stopped retrenching, then he can count why, <laughs> what the cost was. So let's... let's you don't want a 15-year-old. You want to go at least beyond your life cycle. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so what are we saying? We're saying, as a WISP, you've got to evolve. You've got to look at... You grew up in the home. You grew up with bringing internet where telecom was, copper was stolen, or where there was a new community and, and the service wasn't great, and of course trying to call a telecom call center was impossible and no one answered, etc., etc. and you got sticky with your customer and you got close to your customer. Now, we said this to Vodacom, they called us into a meeting a little while ago, and we've got now 500 sectors in Vodacom throughout South Africa. Um, and we said to Luisa, we said, Luisa, you're building a fiber network that's going to serve a customer from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. But Mazi has built a network. Excuse me, I'm wrong. We said to Luisa, you're building a network for 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. But Mazi has built a network from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Why don't you use the same network? Because your home user is not using the network at, hopefully not, at 10 o'clock in the morning. He should be at 
work, paying for the service at home. Of course, when the executive goes home, he would like to have the same kind of service. He'd like the same type of reliability. But what we're saying to WISPs is you've got to look at building one network that services your customers 24 hours a day. So the typical, I think, story we've heard today is how do we fix this? How do we go to these people? How do we go to the home? And what we're really saying is you should be doing this. You should have a network that you can go and coin it at the customer at an enterprise SME layer and give them a SLA type service. And then when they go home, on the same network, instead of having your network run from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., have it running from 7 a.m. to 7 a.m. That's where you've got to go. And that's me. So thank you very much for your time. I look forward to having some drinks with you.